What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up OpenMU for Mac. The device I will be using is a Mac Mini with the M2 chip. Now, if you don't know what OpenMU is, well, it's a multi-system game emulator designed for Mac that plays different ROMs for different systems using what are called cores. Cores are emulators for a particular system that is built into OpenMU. OpenMU can emulate Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, and Atari Linux, ColecoVision, Famicom Disk System, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Intellivision, Neo Geo Pocket, NES, DS, 64, GameCube, Odyssey, PCFX, SG-1000, Sega 32X, Sega CD, Mega CD, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation, PSP, Super Nintendo, TurboGrafx-16, TurboGrafx CD, Virtual Boy, Betrex, and Wonderswan. And any USB or Bluetooth game controller should work with OpenMU. I will be using an Xbox Series controller. Okay, let's head on over to openmu.org. The link to this page is in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click on download now. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open your downloads folder and we're just gonna drag the file to our desktop. Now, if you notice here on my desktop, I have this folder called OpenMU BIOS Pack. You're gonna need to download this if you wanna play PlayStation 1 and Saturn games, as well as other cores in OpenMU that require a BIOS file. Now, I cannot tell you where to get this file here on YouTube, so I have a video on my Patreon page showing you where to download this complete OpenMU BIOS Pack. The link to my Patreon is in the description below. Now, let's go ahead and open OpenMU. So when you first try to open this emulator, it's gonna say that the developer cannot be verified. To fix this, you wanna come up to the top left and click on the Apple logo and go to system settings. Then come down to privacy and security. Scroll all the way to the bottom. And under security, you should see OpenMU was blocked from use. Go ahead and click on open anyway. Enter your password for your Mac you're gonna get another pop-up saying Mac cannot verify the developer, but this time you're gonna see open. Go ahead and click on open. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is add our BIOS pack to OpenMU. So let's go back to the desktop and let's open that OpenMU BIOS pack folder. And what you wanna do here is highlight all of the files that's inside of that folder and just drag them into OpenMU. And just like that, our BIOS files are set up. Now let's go ahead and add some games to OpenMU. And I have an external hard drive hooked up to my Mac that contains some ROMs. Now finding ROMs is not that hard. You can just do a Google search and I'm pretty sure you will find what you are looking for. If you are still having trouble, I also have some videos over on Patreon that can help you with this as well. So I'll upload some games for three systems. Let's start with Sony PlayStation. So in my external hard drive, I have a folder, PS1 games, and all you wanna do is highlight all of your PS1 games and just drag them right into OpenMU. And OpenMU will start scanning them. Now all of my PlayStation games have been uploaded, and as you can see, all of them have cover art. Everything looks nice and neat. Now let's go up and click on Nintendo DS. And I'm gonna drag some DS games to the emulator as well. So I'm going into my Nintendo DS folder on my external hard drive, highlight all of my games, and drag them into OpenMU. All of my DS games have been added to OpenMU. Now let's add one more and we can do Super Nintendo. Highlight my games and drag them in. And all of my Super Nintendo games have been uploaded. Now at this point, make sure your Bluetooth controller or USB controller is connected to your Mac. In my case, I am using an Xbox Series controller and we can go ahead and load up a game and I'll do Battletoads. Mm -hmm. 
Now go ahead and take your mouse and click on the game and you will get this little menu down here. You have your power button that will quit the game. You have pause the game. You can restart the game. You can create or load a save state and you have your options. The options you have is edit game controller, cheats, cores, shaders, and scale. Now by default, OpenMU will lay your controller out for you, but if you go up to edit game controllers, in here you have the option to change your button layout. All you will want to do is click on the button you want to change and then hit that button on your controller and it will go through and allow you to change each button to your liking. And you should see the type of controller you're using right next to input. Also, if the system you're emulating has multiple cores, you can come right here to cores and it will show you what cores are available to use to play these games. In the case of Super Nintendo, we can either use the BSNES core or SNES 9X. I'm fine with SNES 9X, but if I wanted to change it, you could just select that core. Then you will get this message. If you change the core current process will be lost and save states will not work anymore. So I suggest if you're gonna change cores, do it at the beginning of a game before you start the game. And we have shaders. Now you can't upscale the resolution, but you can add some shaders to make the game look a little better. Now you guys can play around with these and see which one you like the best. I prefer to use XBR Z Freescale. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it so you can see what the game looks like. And as you see, the textures look a little smoother. This is the one I prefer. You can choose whatever you like. Now let's go up to Nintendo DS and let's try out a DS game. I'll do Contra 4. Okay, let's check out the options we have in this game. So you still have your edit controls, cheats. This time we have display modes, your shaders, and your scale, which basically controls the size of your screen. So let's go up to display modes. So we can go to dual, and we can change this from vertical to horizontal. I'm gonna change it back because I prefer vertical. You can also make your touch screen on top, but I'm gonna leave it on main first and you can add some separation between each screens. And last, let's jump down to PlayStation so I can show you guys that my BIOS file is working and we'll load up Mega Man X4. And we are in game. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change my shader over to XBRZ Freescale. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.